السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم ما بعد While the brothers are coming from their sunnas quick very short recap from the previous surahs we started from surah al-fil we cover surah fil surah quraish and surah ma'un surah fil allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was reminding us of his power and what happened to those who opposed him and he showed how he protected the family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he protected the Quraysh then the surah after that Surah Al-Quraysh Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala reminds the Quraysh that the favors that were done upon you and the blessings that were given to you elevated your status now don't forget to worship he who did all of that for you then Surah Al-Ma'un where Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala reminded the Munafiqeen and those who acted like they were Muslims of their actions and how these actions are very severe like you know being lazy in the prayer uh, avoiding you know paying the zakah even though it's a very small amount right only 2.5 percent and other actions as well now comes the Surah, surah, surah Al-Kawthar which we'll be covering today it's a very short surah I didn't think we needed the projector because alhamdulillah everyone knows this surah or should know this surah is one of the shortest actually the shortest out of the three shortest surahs right one is surah al-asr the other is surah al-ikhlas and the last one is or this one is surah al-kawthar Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he revealed this surah he revealed it as a gift to the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when we look at the three th shortest surahs, one of them is talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His oneness. Which surah is that? Yes, Surah Al-Ikhlas. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about His oneness. Then the other shortest surah, Surah Al-Asr. This is talking about humankind, about the time and how we end up, if we, end, if we waste our time, then inna al-insana lafi khusr. Right? They're in loss. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Except those who do good. Then we have this surah. This surah is directed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and it is in regards to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now the reason of revelation. Imam Bayhaqi rahmatullahi alayhi mentions that at the time of Jahiliyyah, the Arabs at that time they would look down and they would taunt any of those people who didn't have male offspring or who lost their male offspring. So when the Prophet ﷺ lost his son Qasim, in some narrations mentioned when he lost his son Ibrahim, when he lost his son, of course the leaders of the Quraysh and the enemies of Islam, they couldn't pass up on this opportunity to mock and make fun of the Prophet ﷺ and taunt him. One of the leaders, especially As bin Wa'il, he started taunting the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he started telling the people, you know, now we don't have to worry about this person. This person, Muhammad, he's not going to be anyone. No one is going to remember him in the history. No one is going to, you know, he, he, he doesn't have anyone to carry on his lineage. So everyone's going to forget about him. This is what he started saying. And the, the word that they would use for people like this who, who, lost, their line, uh, who lost their male offspring is Abta. Right? This is the word that they would use. So they started calling the Prophet ﷺ Abta. And they said, you know, this, he's, don't worry about him anymore. Before we were worried that he's going to spread his, uh, you know, his religion and his sons are going to carry it on. They were thinking of like, you know, like a kingdom. You know, there's a king and then there's a son and then it carries on. They didn't understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plan. And he said that he just has daughters. Right? Daughters, they're, they're you know, uh, when they get married, then they're remembered by their husbands, not by their fathers. So they started saying this about the Prophet ﷺ. This is one of the reasons of revelation. Other Mufassirin mentioned that um, there was a person by the name of Kaab bin Ashraf. He came from Medina 
He was one of the Jews, he came from Medina. So the Meccans, they approached him and they said that there's this young person. He's saying that, you know, his, his, you know, his religion, according to his, based on his religion, he's better than us. You know, even though we're the ones who are the custodians of the Kaaba, we're the ones who give water and we take care of the pilgrims, he's saying he's better than us. What do you think? So Kaab bin Ashraf says, like, you are better than us. So the Prophet, uh, the, the Mufassirin mentioned that these are the two reasons of revelation. When these two incidents happened, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, revealed this surah, Inna Atina Kal Kawthar. Now, when we look at the praise, and as I mentioned right in the beginning, that this is a gift for uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and another place in the Quran also tells us that this fact of lineage, this is not something that, this is actually the wisdom and it's a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, مَا كَانَ مُحَمَّدٌ أَبَا أَحَدٍ مِنْ رِجَالِكُمْ That the, this uh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is not the father of any of the men, right? وَلَكِنْ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ وَخَاتِمَ النَّبِيِّنَ He is the Rasul of Allah and he is the final of the Prophets. Now the, the, uh, the scholars and the Mufassirin, they actually mention how this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wisdom and it's a, it's a blessing in disguise. Why? Now imagine the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had you know, two or three sons, right? He had those sons that passed away. Imagine that they, they lived. Who would become the Khalifa? Who would rule after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Now Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was the closest to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But now people would assume that his sons would carry it on. As I mentioned, you think of it as a kingdom. And then, imagine that these, uh, if, the, if these sons weren't able, they, weren't, they didn't get the position. Now people would mock the family of the Prophet ﷺ and saying how, look at his family, look at his sons, they're not even worthy of leading. Right? So there, this is the wisdom and the hikmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plan was never to for this, for this deen to continue through the sons, through the lineage. Rather, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the spiritual father of the entire ummah, and not, the, not only the, the ummah, but the entire humankind. As on the day of Qiyamah, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comes, he will, he will make it very clear, that he, and he has already mentioned this. It will be very clear, and he has mentioned this as well, that when he comes on the day of Qiyamah, he will be leading everyone. All of the prophets, every single person is going to be behind him. He's going to have the he's going to have the liwa al hamd. He's going to have the flag of the praise of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Such praise that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will specially gift him on that day, on that day for him to use, and in, in the praise of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. These these words and these uh, these um, these ways of praise will only be given to him on that day and no one else. Now. Another, another important fact to remember is that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam aside from not having sons, another you know, hikmah that he used was that there was no favors, he never favored his family over anyone. Even in zakat we know that a person who is you know, a descendant of the family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he or she is not eligible to receive zakat. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not want that a person, or you know, it, could be, it can be said that you know, he established the deen so that his family can benefit. This is why zakat, sadaqah, sadaqah is not given to the family of the Prophet ﷺ. Even the inheritance, when the Prophet ﷺ passed away, the, the Anbiya don't have inheritance anyways. But whatever he had, the clothes that he had, the, you know, the, the slippers that he had, those things were put into the Baytul Mal. They were a sadaqah for the community. They weren't given to, you know, his daughter or his son-in-law or his cousin. Not the inheritance, there was no passing down of inheritance. So the surah, number one, it answers the statement of Kaab ibn Ashraf, where he said that the Meccans are better than him. And it also gives great honor and respect to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now let's jump into the surah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The first ayah, inna a'atayna kal kawthar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Verily we have given you kawthar. Now when we hear kawthar, what do we always think of? The fountain of kawthar, right? We think of the river or the fountain of kawthar. Ibn Abbas, Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, he says, and this is in Sahih al-Bukhari, 
he says, Al Kawthar Hu Al Khair Al Kathir. Kawthar is not actually a fountain. Kawthar is actually abundance of goodness. Abundance of goodness. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that we have given you abundance of goodness. We have given you lots of good. Right? Now, if you look through the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you will think that what goodness, you know, of course, you know, we, th we understand that he's a prophet, but when you're thinking of goodness, you're thinking he has a fountain, you know, it's, it's a very, you know, a, some tangible thing. We look at the Prophet Sallallahu life, it seems like one of the poorest leaders of all time. But when we look at the reality, his connection with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala makes him one of the wealthiest. Right? There was nothing that he could not have. If he wanted, he was offered it too. The Mara'ika offer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the Mara'ika to offer him the different things. Right? Even the Quraysh offered him, but he turned all of it down. And that's a separate topic, but that was, you know, for simplicity to show what is the, what is the best role model, what is the best example. Now, aside from that, we look at the journey of Mi'raj. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he went to he, you know, he went all the way. He didn't just go to the moon. He didn't go to Mars. He went all the way to the to an area where no, even Jibrail salam could not go. He visited all the you know all the all the uh, the angels. He visited all the prophets. He visited all the skies. He led all the anbiya. He led all the anbiya in salah. And on the day of, and and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi says that on the day of qiyamah, ana sayyidu buldi adam. Wala fakhr. He's saying I, I don't. There's no pride in this. But I am the leader of all humankind. He says, "Ana hamilu wila alhamd." As I mentioned, he is. He, I'm the. I'm the. The flag bearer of Hamd on the day of Qiyamah. Wala fakhr. And he mentions that all the prophets, all the human being, will be behind me on the day of Qiyamah. Wala fakhr. I will be the first person who the door of Jannah will open for. Wala fakhr. There's no. There's no. There's no pride in this. There's no arrogance in this. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala favored him with lots of abundance. Goodness and, and uh, sorry, lost abundance and goodness. One of these blessings from amongst the you know all of those blessings that I mentioned, one of them is kothar. Now, aside from kothar being the definition, the definition being goodness, there is also another meaning, which is the or uh, it's the name of the river in Jannah. There's a river in Jannah which is called kothar. On the day of Qiyamah, two channels, two channels of water will be flowing downwards from Jannah. And these will come down into the plain of gathering, where, where everyone will be gathered on the day of Qiyamah. And in that area, there will be two channels coming down and that will be forming the fountain of Kothar. Or, you know, it will, it will be from the river of Kothar, it will be forming a fountain. The Prophet ﷺ will be standing there. The Ummah will see him on the day of Qiyamah and see that this is the person that we were following and they will start going towards that. They will start going towards that fountain to meet the Prophet ﷺ and to be blessed with the water of Kawtham. Some of the qualities of this water, Rasulullah ﷺ mentions that a person who drinks from this water will never ever be thirsty again. Once they drink from this water, they will never be thirsty. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he went for Mi'raj, he saw this huge fountain. And Jibreel Alayhi Wasallam took him to both sides. And he says that on both sides there was, there was a pearl, right? A massive pearl. Such a huge pearl that it's basically just one piece. And he didn't realize until he got closer that within this pearl there's a palace. That's how big the pearl is. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be in that pearl on the day of Qiyamah uh, while, the, while the Ummah is waiting to meet him, they will come towards that pearl. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be waiting there. He says that the taste of this water is sweeter than honey. It's nothing like we've ever tasted before. You know when we go to, you go, you go to Mecca or Medina and you're, you're drinking the Zamzam for quite a while, right? So for people that stay there for a longer time, I'm sure they can relate better. Right? If you stay there for a few months, you're drinking the water, continuously you're drinking that water, and then when you go to drink regular water, it feels like you know, that what you're drinking is not actually water, it's chemicals. So the scholars mention that you know how we experience that? When we drink the water of Kawthar, inshaAllah, right, it will feel like we never drank water in our life. That will be the real water that we're tasting for the first time. 
And subhanAllah, on the day of Qiyamah, everyone will be thirsty. We know that the sun will be very close. So when the people come, they'll be, they'll be you know, granted that water from the hands of the Prophet wasallam or the Khulafa al-Rashideen. And they'll be given, when they, they're given that water, it will be nice and cold. And it'll be very satisfying. And of course, the, the blessing of getting it from the hands of the Prophet wasallam passed down to the uh, Khulafa al-Rashideen and then they will be handing it out. The, the narrations mention that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he will appoint Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and Ali radiallahu anhuma to each corner of the fountain. And because of course the ummah will be massive, right? It will be the biggest ummah out of all the all the prophets' ummahs, all the nations. So the, the, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam will appoint the Khulafa Rashidin to hand out the water, and the, the the narration mentions that those people who had any hatred or anything bad, uh, any bad ill feelings towards any of the Khulafa Rashidin, right? whether it was for example Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu and they went to Umar to get the water, no, they will not be given that water. The water will not go to those people who, who hated or had any ill feelings towards the Khulafa Rashidin. Another important note to keep in mind when we're thinking of this water, and inshaAllah, uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who are blessed, are, are given that blessed water, inshaAllah, on the day of Qiyamah. There are people who the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will see that they're coming towards the, the fountain and then the angels come and they grab them. They're taking them away. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will you know, tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that th those are my followers. Those are my followers. Like, why are you taking them away? So then the angels will tell them Tell the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that these people after you, they actually, you know, they made changes into the deen. They, you know, they uh, made bid'at. They ahdath. This is the word that the, uh, the hadith uses. That they they, they made bid'at and they innovations into the deen. So these people will be removed. The munafiqeen, they will be removed. They will be taken away. May Allah subhanahu wa taala protect us from being from amongst those people. Now. Looking at the second verse, this first verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving the glad tidings. He is giving, uh, t telling Allah Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that even these people are talking bad about you, even those people are putting you down. You know, we're rejecting them and we're, uh, this, the glad tidings is that you're given kawthar, you're given abundance of goodness and at the same time you have been given the fountain of kawthar. The second ayah, inna a'tina kal kawthar fa salli li rabbika wanhar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's attention to the blessing. Now after the blessing, what do you do? You have to be grateful for the blessing. You have to be grateful for all that you have been given. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that perform the prayer for your Lord. فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكْ And one nahar. nahar. Nahar is used for sacrificing a camel. Right? The Arabs most of the time, they, at that time, they would sacrifice a camel. And so Nahar is the, the method where they take the dagger and they, you know, you stand beside the camel. It's not like the zaba from the top because of course the camel is very tall. They take, the, they take the dagger and they put it into the chest of the camel. So this is Nahar. But Nahar is also generally used for sacrifice as well. In, the, in, this, in this instance, it's talking about general sacrifice. Two things that Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Number one, فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ right? Pray. Now you're thinking the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was, you know, he was already praying. He was praying all the time. So, so much so that his you know, foot were, feet were swollen. Still Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling him, Salli, salli. Why? The salah is a means, it's the best worship. It's the best worship that a person can do. The best physical worship. And this is the strongest way of building connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Surah Al-Alaq, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? Wasjud waqtarib. In the salah there are actions like ruku, there are sujood. These are when we are closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we are bowing down in front of Him. When our head is on the ground. When we are doing sujood. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Wasjud waqtarib. Do sujood and you will get closer. Get closer to, uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So over here he's telling him, فَصَلِّ do, do, do ruku, do sujood, do the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What makes us, or what makes shaitan separate or different from everyone? 
What did he do differently? When, when everyone was told to do sujood, he rejected. He rejected. That's why sujood is the most important. Every time a person does sujood, this is one of the hardest actions on shaitan actually. The narration mentioned that shaitan, he cries. He cries when a person is praying and when a person does sujood. Because he sees that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me the opportunity to do sujood and I rejected it. This person, he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded him and gave him the opportunity and he took that opportunity and, and did sujood. Because of that, I'm going to go in, the, and I'm gonna go in uh, Jahannam and they're not going to go in Jahannam. That's why one of his biggest efforts is for a person to stop praying. His ultimate goal is for a person to stop praying so they can get disconnected from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how important salah is. I'm not going to go too much into salah because we already know how important it is and we've talked about it before as well. But one important thing regarding salah, right now we spoke about general uh, prayer, but the night prayer. This is the most important. After the fara'id, the most important is the night prayer. Right? This was the habit of every pious person, every prophet, every sahabi. Right? They all had this one habit, that they prayed in the night. They turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it was the hardest and when, it, when everyone else was sleeping. This is when we connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the best. A person will enter Jannah on the day of Qiyamah. He will come and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will see that there's no good deeds. He doesn't have any good deeds. All he sees is bad deeds. So he will, you know, he gives up. He, he, he thinks that he's lost. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him, go to Jannah. So, you know, Sometimes when the police lets you go, you're still curious, why did he let me go? You know, you get pulled over and you're like, oh, I was speeding, I was doing this, I was doing that wrong, I didn't give my indicator, I broke the stop sign, still he let me go. And sometimes people are curious, too curious, and they ask the question. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is arhamur rahimin, he's most merciful. The person asks him, why are you letting me into Jannah? I don't have, I don't have any good deeds. He says, this one night, you woke up, you said Allah, and you went back to sleep. You woke up and you showed your connection with me by saying Allah and you went back to sleep because of that you're going to Jannah. This is how we build a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It doesn't have to be something big. The, um, Abdullah ibn Salam radiallahu an, at, at a point when he wasn't Muslim, he went and he saw the Prophet, so he heard that there was a Prophet and he, you know, he was a very learned person. So he knew that there was a Prophet that was going to come. And he heard that, you know, there's people talking about there's a Prophet now. So what did he do? He went and he and searched for the Prophet Sallallahu And when he saw him, he heard him saying some words, right? And he says, those, that because of those advices that he heard, he ended up becoming Muslim after that. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Afshu salam spread salam Ati'imu ta'am, feed people. Wasallu bil layli wa nasu niyam. And pray, in the night, when people are sleeping, تَدْخُلُ الْجَنَّةَ بِسَلَامٍ You will enter Jannah with peace and ease. It's very simple. Three things. Spread salam. Afshu salam. أَطْعِمُ taam وَصَلُّوا بِاللَّيْلِ وَالنَّاسُ نِيَامٍ And pray in the night. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the highest form of physical worship to pray. And the second, he's telling him to do one uh, hal, sacrifice. This is not referring to only the sacrifice of Eid. Even though that's the highest form of worship, monetary worship, where you sacrifice an animal and you, you, know, you feed people and whatever you do with that, uh, that animal. That's one of the highest forms of monetary worship. But aside from that, the deen itself requires sacrifice. Just like how for the dunya we're sacrificing. Just like how for the dunya we, you know, we left our uh, parents back home in you know, different countries and we move from our families and we wake up early in the morning and we, you know, we stay long hours, we get tired, you know, we're, we have to listen to uh, you know, different things from our bosses. We go through all the different difficulties for some you know, temporary gain, all the sacrifices. So imagine for this temporary stuff, if we need to sacrifice, how much do we need to sacrifice for the hereafter, which is permanent and everlasting. So this sacrifice will come, you know, this, this is something that's a must. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says along with that, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا That those who struggle, those who struggle for us, for our sake, for the deen, لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُلَنَا Then we will open many paths for them. We will open many paths. 
and this is you know tried true and tested in the you know in every in every generation in every century and every time right whether it be the prophets uh, the Isa Ibrahim Musa alayhi salatu wasalam or the prophet sallallahu time the tabi'in taba tabi'in whatever it was when they sacrificed when they did the qurbani that was you know needed for the time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened up ways and this is not only at that time this is found in today's time as well when we when we struggle and we you know for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we make an effort Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will surely definitely reward us so this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam be grateful by praying salah building that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and making sacrifice in our life whether it be monetary uh, you know, mentally, physically, or any other type of sacrifice. Brings us to the final ayah. Inna shani'aka huwa al-abd. And you know those people that they were talking about you and said you were abdar and you will be cut off and you will be forgotten. Inna shani'aka, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's promise that your oppressor shani'a is referring to those people who taunt, those people who look for faults. You're, you know, the people who are looking for faults in you, your enemies, who al abtar? They are discontinued. They are forgotten. They are lost in history. Who is As bin Wa'il, the one who was calling you Abtar? Who, who remembers him? No one, in his, no one remembers him. Who remembers his family? No one. Who remembers Ka'ab bin Ashraf? No one. We only have these names because of the narrations of the hadith. That's it. Who knows who their family is? Who knows what their lineage is? No one knows. This is actually a miracle and proof that the Qur'an is a true book also as well. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made a promise in this, in this ayah. And at that time, everyone thought that the Prophet ﷺ because or Muhammad is, doesn't have any sons, so he's not, everyone's going to forget about him. Rasulullah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Nashra, he mentions, We have raised and elevated your name. We have elevated your name. And this is, this is a proof of the Qur'an being a miracle, an everlasting miracle, that the promise that he made has come true. No one remembers those people, but everyone knows Muhammad. Ask a non-Muslim, who's Muhammad? They will tell you. Muhammad is the most common name in the entire world. When we go, when you, any, any country you go to, you hear, you hear any adhan going on from the minara, you can hear the name Muhammad. Anyone saying the kalima, they're saying Muhammad with it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserved the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is, you know, four, not 1400 years ago, this is today we're talking about. You go to any country, you can hear the adhan. You can ask anyone and they will, they will, they will know that Muhammad, who was Muhammad. So these are, this is Surah Al-Kawthar, as I mentioned right in the beginning. This, is a, this was a gift to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Once again, we'll go through the translation quickly before we wrap up. Inna a'tayna kal-kawthar. Verily, we have given you... The kawthar, which refers to abundance of goodness and also includes the fountain and the river uh, of paradise. Right. Pray to your Lord one har and sacrifice. Those verily your enemies, those are, are the ones who have who are abta, those who are cut off and they are forgotten. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to benefit from these ayat. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to open the Quran and under, learn the Quran and understand the Quran. Ameen wa akhru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillah because we all know this surah, right? This is, uh, inshallah, if we can retain some of this information, it will be very beneficial. Every time we read the surah, we can think that what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying and what is he telling the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is how we will build a better salah as well. When we're reading, we're praying the salah, we have to read the surahs anyways, right? And I'm sure we read this surah in our salah as well. So it is important that we retain this information and use it while we're praying instead of just reading mindlessly. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give myself and everyone tawfiq. Ameen wa akhru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Inshallah there will be some refreshments served right now. So please uh, stay behind.